Right, we're all done, tape's all on, and um, we're ready to wrap some coils. So, um, the first set of windings we have to put on um, is going to be a fine gauge wire, and this is going to be to switch our transistor on and off. Um, when we wrap this, we're going to wrap it around one section, just one layer. Miss the next section, wrap the next section, miss the next section, wrap the next section, and um, that is going to be it. So we'll have every second one, we'll have our uh, switching coil on it. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. Alright, so we've got our switching coils wound, one here one here, one here, every second one, all wound in the same direction around our core. Um, now I know what you're going to say, one layer just isn't going to be enough to trigger the transistor or switch the transistor on. Well, now it's time for one of them facts. You only need um, turn ratio, you don't need how many back and forward bloody lumps of crap you've put on there to take up space. So um, the idea is to put as little as possible um, amount of turns on for your uh, switching coil. Um, and the reason is because if you've got too much um, and that coil generates too much current um, as you know, on your uh, standard pulse motor circuit, you've normally got a 1K pot or something on the base, coupled up to a 100 ohm resistor. So, you start your motor and you have to turn that pot down, or turn the resistance up on that pot, to um, settle your motor down a bit so it's not drawing too much current. But the higher the resistance um, across that pot, the more power you're burning off through that pot, um, and you're simply converting the available energy in your whole setup into heat and out through the pot it goes. And I'm sure some of you have burnt out a lot of pots and the reason for that is you've got too many bloody turns for your system um, on your trigger coil and burning out a pot is showing you exactly how much power you're losing um, through that pot. Uh, that is resistive losses. Resistance with current causes heat. The higher the resistance, the more heat, the more power you're going to be dissipating from your system as heat. So, believe it or not, there's actually 360 turns all up on those three, um, three windings. So, um, that is more than ample. So, that's the idea. Keep your trigger windings down as low as possible. Um, you only need enough current to switch your transistor on and off nice and cleanly. You don't need that much that you need to turn your um, variable resistor or your pot into a big um, heater for your bedroom. So um, that's one fact. Keep your winding ratio for your trigger down. If you're using Neo magnets you're going to need less wines than you will if you're going to be using um, good old bloody ceramic magnets which aren't as strong. So um, that's our trigger winding wound on. I'll tape this one up and then we're going to go through and wind our uh, drive coils which go straight on top of the same coil as our switching coils. So uh, one, two, three. Um, and wind them in the same direction. Not really necessary but it just um, helps um, sort everything out when we go to hook up the circuit. Makes it a little easier. You don't have to have one end going one way and the other end going the other way and totally opposite to your drive coils and all that crap. So keep the windings the same. So uh, like I said this um, trigger transistor motor um, was around way back in the 60s, so it's nothing new. And um, 
still today a very effective way to trigger a uh, pulse motor. Alright, so I'm going to go and tape that up, put our uh, drive windings on and we'll be back. Alright, so now our drive coils are all wound over our um, transistor switching coils or trigger coil, whatever you want to call it and um, we're ready to put on our um, generator coils um, 200 turns on each for a total of 600 turns so um, now I know you're going to uh, want to know what size wire for our uh, trigger coil and our run coil I'm sorry you're going to have to buy the book of secrets to um, get all that information no, no, just kidding. Um, let me find my verniers and of course it doesn't really matter as long as you're somewhere within the ballpark um, this is going to be a machine that you can build around about and not exactly to get it to work unlike some claims when you spend all that money and it doesn't work and they say well you didn't do this right and you didn't do that right and this is wrong and that's wrong well here this is not going to be the situation here we're going to get around about so we got uh, 0.39 so that's uh, 0.4 mil wire that is our uh, trigger wire or our transistor switching wire and um, our run is the 0.66 so that's a 0.65 millimeter copper wire. Fairly heavy gauge, because um, this is actually going to be doing some mechanical work. We want some sort of um, decent mechanical output on it, and um, not just our uh, battery charging abilities of the system. We also want to get a decent electrical output from our um, generating coils. Now the generating coils, um, here it's entirely up to you how you set it up. Um, now you can take the same size wire and just uh, wrap these other three blank sections, one continual uh, turn and just have one single output on your generator coils for um, high voltage heavy current. Um, charging or um, output or you can do what I'm going to do um, I'm going to put one heavy um, coil on nice thick wire for um, a decent current output I'm going to put one intermediate coil on charging 12 24 volt batteries and I'm going to put one um, fine wire coil on with many many turns for a uh, high voltage output um, and when we're testing the machine we're simply going to load one coil at a time hopefully one will be charging a battery the other one might be charging another battery of a high voltage or it might be uh, running some um, incandescent bulbs and this one here, the high voltage one, might be running some neons or something like that. A um, CFL tube or a 240 volt um, LED. Plenty of things we can try but that's uh, the way I'm going to set it up because um, this is an experimental device and hell I don't even know if it's going to work yet so um, this could all be for nothing. But um, my smaller version I built years ago worked and this core just happened to turn up in a uh, junked out washing machine I got off the side of the road during throw out day and um, it looks like it might be Mickey Mouse for the job so um, now I'm just going to go and wind all my um, generating coils on and uh, we'll uh, come back and have a look I'm actually going to wrap all these coils now in insulation tape to protect them um, they look pretty sitting out there with their nice goldy browny colour but um, yeah we need to uh, protect the wire so 
I'm going to wrap them and then I'm going to wind the other coils. So we'll come back when that's done. Alright, so um, I've got one of the generator coils wound on there. Um, 500 turns. Same gauge wire that we're using for our drive coils. Um, so I think that'll be ample for that core there. Um, going to see if I can find some heavier gauge wire, which I don't seem to have. Um, but I do have plenty of uh, smaller gauge wire, which may require a join um, for our next winding here. So, um, right now I'm going to go and have some dinner. Not that it'll bother you guys watching this, because um, it'll be like I haven't even gone at all. So, uh, a bit of a um, time travel thing. Anyway, uh, we'll be back when I've got the next two on, and um, that'll be our state of complete. So, uh, we'll see you shortly. Alright, so um, our coil's all wound. Or our stator, should I say. Um, so here's what we ended up with. Of course we have our drive coils here. One, two and three. We have our um, intermediate coil. Which is uh, 500 or 600. I can't remember now. Never wrote it down. Um, 500 turns, pretty sure. Um, of our uh, 0.61 wire. Over here I have 400 turns um, all together of a bifill R wire, that means uh, 200 turns each. Now they're wound on together and the reason I've done this is because I didn't have any bigger wire. So um, I guess this gives us the opportunity to run it in parallel like this or in series. So high current output, low voltage, or uh, high voltage output, low current. Um, but this one was mainly for heavy loads, so um, it'll be used primarily in a, um, a uh, what you call it, mine block, um, <coughs> parallel situation. And um, over here, as you can see this little one with this fine wire, um, there is 1,000 turns on there, so it's going to be our high voltage coil. So the next job <coughs> um, is to make our rotor, but it just so happened, looking through my junk file, I have a rotor that may do the job, uh, we'll get the maintenance of it, um, from a previous experiment. Um, it's actually got six magnets in it and we've got six poles. Now the only thing is um, <coughs> there is a fairly big gap between the rotor oh, and them are in 52's in there that just like to stick really bad. Pinch my fingers. I'm not going to be able to get that sitting in the middle anyway. Simple as that. Just wants to go round and round. But anyway, um, although it is smaller, those magnets are quite powerful, and I think it may work out alright. I had my finger in front of the uh, viewer, sorry about that. I think we're going to be able to take um, some of these magnets here, which may work out. Yeah, we tried to get magnets apart with bloody one hand, especially these Neos that just keep coming back together. Anyway, we're just going to stick one of them each on the um, face of the existing magnets to uh, sharpen that field up a bit. And then um, that will actually give us about the 10mm gap that we want, which is what I normally start off with um, when making pulse motors. So we're actually going to uh, see if we can utilise this one here, because it already has the uh, drive shaft and everything in it. Um, I just have to find a bearing carrier, or make one, and um, we'll be able to use that. I do believe I have one somewhere, who knows where, but, but uh, for that video, that's it. Our coils all wound, our stator's all wound with our coils, 
um, and we're ready to get the rotor assembly going. And I also have to work out how I'm going to mount this now. I think I'm going to be carefully drilling holes down through here, <coughs> although I didn't really want to. Um, although I will be able to drill holes down through there and put a uh, steel bolt in there so as we don't lose any of our field or mess it up. Um, I have to think about that. I'm sure we'll come up with something. Um, but anyway, uh, for now that's uh, where we're at and our next video is going to be mounting the stator, our broder, our dogs are barking, uh, and then we'll do some voltage tests. So, uh, alright, well I'm going to go and kick the dogs over the fence and um, get this video uploaded for you guys to watch and uh, we'll see you next one.